Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. And this week, we're going to do my fountain, day, fountain pen day special, which is a little bit weak, but oh well. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and inks at all price points and at all... <laughs> I forgot my spiel. Um, yeah, forget the spiel. I don't even remember what I'm supposed to say. I'm so discombobulated now. Um, so what I was going to say here is uh, I'm, I'm a little bit late. I uh, Fountain pen day was very busy for me. That whole week was very busy. And then the next week we got a day off because it's a state holiday veterans day and we had a blizzard so you know snow day and i filmed a lot of videos and then it got to be late saturday night and i thought pens in use a little late so uh i don't have very many pens this week for reasons i'll get into but i hope there's some good ones and i uh, hope a little discussion afterwards will be worth it so let's dive into it a little bit thin selection this week. The reason it's so thin is I've been working, uh, well, had a snow day, and I ended up filming a lot of reviews, a lot of first impressions, so I, I have a lot of pens inked up that I just can't show you. So, uh, yeah, I've been writing a lot, a lot of Parker Quink washable blue, and uh, since I filmed a f couple more pen rodeos, I've got a lot of blue mar inked up also. So these are the pens that aren't that. Some of these are uh, hanging on by a thread, though. So from left to right, we have the Twisby Draco, the Parker Vector, the Pilot Cust I'm sorry, the the Pilot Justice ninety two, um, Moon Man Mini, the yes, I did almost forget its name for a second, uh, the Waterman Koran, and the Lamy two thousand. So we'll just take a quick look at these here before we do the writing sample. So the Twisby Draco has a very nice, attractive acrylic finish. Very minimal branding, which I appreciate. Kind of a neat little finial. It's a piston filler. Intelligently brass on brass rings, uh, threads. The ink is getting down, but it's not gone. I've heard the complaint that the nib is too small for the pen. I guess I buy enough vintage that it really doesn't bother me. But hey, you do you, boo. I'm pretty sure it's a steel nib. All in all, a very nice pen. My next pen is a Parker Vector. Uh, this pen has mostly been being used to address envelopes and such because it has a permanent ink in it, uh, the, the platinum carbon black. It looks kind of inadequate between the two pens it's with, but true story, my very first pen ever was a Parker Vector. And we have the Pilot Justice 92, 95, sorry. Pilot Justice 95 has a very nice, uh, what would you call that, chaste finish? Barley corn? I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, again, very understated. Has a very quality sound and feel. Cartridge converter pen. And here, the weirdest thing about it is this cantilevered adjustment thingy. Which, uh, I've used more than I honestly thought I would. Then we have the Moon Man Mini One Kai. I think that was the name. I I kind of like the three dimensionality of the finish you know, with the black ink in it. It's maybe not the best choice. Uh, I am probably going to just clean it out though. I I inked it up in June. And uh, haven't been writing with it very much. It's it's a good pocket pen. It's not so great for just regular writing. But I'm just finding that 
well, this summer a lot of what I did, I just didn't need a pocket pen. It didn't get used, and now it's... Oh, what is today? Snow day. Uh, no, it's not a snow day. It is uh, Saturday, anyway, whatever day it is. 19th, something like that. A lot of snow outside, anyway, November 19th. So this is a Waterman Karen. I think the new lights are helping show off the color of this pen a little bit better. Just a very attractive finish. And then, of course, a inlaid nib. And finally, my beloved Lamy 2000, who will take a short break over the upcoming December holiday um, while I clean it out for use all spring. Because it really hasn't... Actually, I might not have to, because I, I have switched black inks twice, I think, during the school year, so uh, it's been cleaned. So maybe I won't bother. Maybe I'll just use it all through the holiday break. But those are the pens I'm using. Let's see how they write. As usual, I'll be using this seafood flavored, um, suddenly drawing a blank, Cognitive Surplus Journal. That's what I get for taking two weeks off of this. All right, so the first pen is this Twisby Draco. So I showed them to you because I realized that with this white background of the paper, the exposure keeps flipping back and forth. I will say that I think I've solved the white balance problem. Actually, that's not too bad. The writing might be a bit overexposed. We'll see. So this is the Twisby Draco. I bought it with a broad nib. I just, as soon as I saw this pen, I fell in lust. This is an Aroshizuku. Kirisami. It looks a little dark because I haven't done much uh, writing with the gray pen this week. So it makes a nice swatch with this broad nib, and it's a wet nib. You know, people might not like the appearance of a small nib on it, but I think this small nib does a great job. I enjoy writing with this pen very, very much. In fact, I might refill it with the exact same ink just to write with it some more. Okay, this pen has been used lately for addressing envelopes and such, and I'm putting more lab labels on my pen collection so I can store them properly and put them back where they're supposed to be so they all fit. <laughs> Um, but this is a Parker Jotter. No, it isn't. Parker Vector. Parker. There we go. Wow. Vector. This has a medium nib on it. And the ink is Platinum. Platinum. You'd think filming early in the morning I wouldn't have trouble. Carbon Black which is one of their nano inks. So if you're looking for a truly permanent black, here you go. Once it's dry, it's there. Once it's in your clothes, it's there. Once it's dried in the pen, it's there. So this pen is about due to get not refilled, but cleaned. And I'll probably put the carbon black in another similar pen. I have a whole bunch of these Parker Ve yeah Parker Vectors, so I might just put it in another Parker Vector. And if the ink looks a little bit gray on the screen, that is a drawback to this ink. It uh, sits on the surface of the paper. It doesn't soak in, so it's slightly reflective. Okay, my next pen is, of course, the Pilot Justice. 
I have a beautiful ink in this pen. So we'll do that soft, then we'll turn to the hard setting. So just the less bounce and definitely more of a feel of being hard. So the Pilot Justice, I turn it back again, 95. I bought mine with a fine nib. The ink in it is Deatramentus. Mint Turquoise, which is just a very attractive color. T-U-R. I, uh... When I bought this pen, there was one that had just come out called the Pilot Falcon, and I had thought about getting that one instead. It was a little bit cheaper. But I have to admit, I've really enjoyed this pen, and I haven't felt the urge to get a Pilot Falcon. And, you know, now that I'm more into vintage pens, I guess... Although you wouldn't know that by today's selection of pens, but now that I realize that about myself, I... I think I made the right choice. There's just something fun and unique about that pen. Whereas the Pilot Falcon, yeah, the nib is kind of cool looking, but it's not unique. So this pen, like I said, I think I'm just going to wash out. I am impressed that it keeps its seal and it never has hard starts those few times I have written with it this summer and fall and now almost winter. But, you know, it's, uh, I just don't like it. You know, it's uh, good as a pocket pen. It seems to be pretty decent about not unscrewing in my pocket, which is good. But uh, nothing special, so it's just a fine nib. And the ink in it is... I don't remember. Black. If I filled it this summer, it's probably not Aurora Black. Oh, I was using Aurora back in July, so maybe it is. Okay. Yeah, so I, I used up uh, my Parker Quink Black back in July and switched to Aurora Black. So it, it's probably Aurora Black. I had a very busy June, so I know I didn't go anywhere in June. So I've got the feeling this is probably Aurora Black. Um, Aurora Black isn't the friendliest on uh, lower quality paper, but this nib is so stingy that it doesn't really matter. Now this is a pen where you'll get hardly anything when you do the smear test, even with your grossest, wettest, sloppiest inks. See? <laughs> Nothing! And then we get to... The Waterman Karen. It's just a beautiful pen. And great to write with, especially now that I found this uh, broad nib to put on it. So Waterman Karen. And the ink in it is Rohrer and Klingner Alt Goldgrün. When this bottle runs empty, I don't have another color like it. This is one I will probably replace. I'm trying to work through all my colors and just get down to one of each color. I think I found my one alt gold green. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I do have a bottle of uh, Krishna Gat Green, which I need to try, so maybe I'll like that one better. Who knows? And my last pen for today, of course, is my ubiquitous Lamy 2000. has a fine nib and the ink in it is Aurora Black. Yeah. 
And that's just a very nice pen to write with. It uh, just feels comfortable. Looks good. Um, kids see me using it all the time and they, can I have that? <laughs> no kid, I'm not just giving away this pen. Now, it's, it's an impressive pen. Up close. From a distance, you don't re recognize how well made it is. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. And now I'm going to share a message I was going to share on November 4th. So those are the pens and inks I've been using this week for the most part, other than the ones full of turquoise ink, blue mar, or else full of Parker Quink washable blue for my first impressions. So uh, I, I actually have a lot of pens inked up, just not a lot of variety of colors of ink right now. So my pen pals are getting a lot of Parker Quink washable blue for page after page. So hopefully they're putting up with that. But I got a lot of videos filmed over that uh, break. And uh, not the talking part, just the uh, writing part. I actually was really lazy during the snow day. I didn't even shower that morning. If So, you know, if you think that's gross, <laughs> don't visit me that morning. And don't think about it while you're watching me writing when you finally see one of those videos. I think I figured out the white balance problem. Um, I haven't published anything yet, but I've, you know, I've seen it on my computer, so I think the white balance is fixed. I'm tweaking the lighting a little bit yet, but I'm getting better at it. Uh, I just discovered setting this up for today that the heads of these new lights rotate. I thought there was only one part that rotated, so that was exciting. So I may have to make use of that in future videos. So we'll see. And of course, with the holidays coming, my set behind me will change slightly. You'll notice the lava lamp is off. Um, there should be exciting lighting back there next time you see me. We'll, we'll see how it cooperates with these new lights, which I'm really liking, by the way. I love that they are off the floor. They take up less space. They're very usable as desk lamps. Uh, I actually was going to get rid of this desk lamp because I figured I wouldn't need it anymore. But for I found out for close-ups on the pens that it is still needed, so... But yeah, that was a very worthwhile investment of uh, some channel income. I think I'm going to get more, not just for the channel, but for me personally, out of these lights than I would have out of, out of a new pen. I did treat myself to a birthday pen. I got a very substantial discount on a vintage Mont Blanc 146, which is a pen I swore I would never own. But when the discount put it down in Lamy 2000 territory... And it's vintage. I just like, maybe. <laughs> and I did. So um, look for that somewhere down the road. So mostly what I want to do today, I wrote up a whole spiel that I was going to do the day of Fountain Pen Day, which was November 4th. Um, but like I said, that was a horribly busy week. And, you know, the next day was my birthday, but busy. So, yeah, not much birthday celebrating. Didn't even do a pens in use, so. I'm going to do the Fountain Pen Day spiel now. Uh, I'm also going to say with uh, various holidays coming up, last year I tried to do a Q&A and between weather and my job and uh, various other issues that popped up that were technical in nature, I didn't get it filmed. I still have the questions, so I'm going to start working on the Q&A so I'm hoping sometime over the holiday break to publish that instead of a pens in use one week, uh, just as something a little bit different. And I have two road tours that I'm hoping over one of these holiday breaks or both that I can get those up. Um, kind of fun stuff. I didn't get the third road tour the way I wanted it, mainly because I forgot about a technical issue that I learned about on road tour number one. But we'll... We'll get some stuff out there that's a little different, I hope. And we'll have a driving video tomorrow um, where I kind of look at the good, the bad, and the ugly about teaching in small schools and you know, a little bit about living in one. So uh, look forward to that, too. But that's enough preview. Let's talk about Fountain Pen Day. So I am a day late and a dollar short on that. Uh, Fountain Pen Day was November 4th. It's now November 19th. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Uh, but we're going to celebrate Fountain Pen Day anyway, because I've forgotten to a few years in a row. 
So I've done my story several times about how I got into fountain pens. Uh, it, it'll be coming up actually now. By now it did come up on Apple Boom Pennons uh, channel. It, I thought it would be a few months yet, but it's already been up. So I'll put a link in the video description if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but I want to talk about fountain pens in the modern era. They're messy. Um, I filmed some videos to d this morning, and yeah, I, I've got smears of ink all over the place. Uh, you have to refill them, and you need to periodically clean them. Um, my Parker Jotter ballpoint only occasionally demands a new refill. And then I just pop out the piece and pop in a new piece and I'm golden. Uh, fountain pens generally are more expensive. You go buy a Parker Jotter ballpoint or a Parker Jotter fountain pen, the, the fountain pen costs more. You buy a Parker Dual Fold fountain pen or a Parker Dual Fold ballpoint, if they still make ballpoints, I think they do. Uh, which one's more expensive? The fountain pen. So they must offer some advantages, otherwise why would so many people be using them? And we are a small community. If you're watching this, you're part of a very small community. So let's set finish and appearance aside. Dirty little secret. You can find ballpoint pens with gorgeous finishes. In fact, I think the Parker Dual Fold ballpoint is the most beautiful ballpoint there is. I think that's a gorgeous design. I've never bought one because they're really expensive, but I did buy a vintage Parker Dual Fold pencil uh, just because it had that same appearance. And it's a beautiful pencil. It's got some mechanical issues, but we'll set that aside. Uh, just beautiful. I love that design. So that's not the advantage that fountain pens have. A big advantage of fountain pens is the ink color that they offer. If you've watched my channel, you know only a tiny subset of the ink that's out there. And I have a lot of ink. Over the past few years, the only ink I have purchased has been Parker Quink Washable Blue. But that's because I want to actually enjoy the rainbow of colors that I already have. And I'm setting myself a goal of getting down to just one of each color. Um, so yeah, you can have... If you're into this kind of thing, you can have multiple green inks in various shades. Oh, today I want a more spring-colored green. Oh, I think a cooler, more sedate green with a little blue in it would be nice today. You have that with fountain pen ink. And there is so much ink. And Oh, and by the way, you can buy the platinum mixable inks and make your own colors. So there's so much ink and there's so many colors out there. And some people in the fountain pen universe build their channels talking entirely about ink. Even better for them, some retailers sell ink samples. How much are three to five milliliter vials of ink worth to you? I like... A viewer sent me this, and it was full when I got it. I hope I'm on screen with that. Um, just as an example, and I have more samples laying here. Um, the, they're wonderful for trying out new colors. Um, yeah, they're way more expensive per milliliter than buying the bottle of ink, but it's a way, a cheap way to try out colors. And as a science teacher, sometimes I've found those little vials useful afterwards in my lab. But anyway, I just like trying a color. That That's really the joy of those samples. So I'm, that was a, a bag of Krishna samples that a viewer sent to me. I have several other samples down here. I've got uh, Schaefer and whatever else. I've got all kinds of ink samples here that viewers have sent to me. I don't even really have... I have two samples that I bought that I wanted to try of some detrimentous documenting. So uh, if I want to truly experience an, an ink, of course, I want to use a broad nib, especially if it's kind of wet. Uh, it's that variety of nibs that adds so much to fountain pens. As a collector of vintage pens, I have seen a lot of nibs, and they all have their personalities. An italic and a stub are quite different. Yes, they're wider than they are thick, so they'll make a very thin line going horizontally, but a thick line, kind of like my fingers would, a thick line going vertically. Uh, but the italic is very crisp, especially if it's a cursive italic. So sharp it can almost cut the paper if you go at it at the wrong angle. 
uh, the, the stub nib is more forgiving and usually untipped. Um, there's the fine and the broad nibs. There's the double broad, the extra fine, the ultra extra fine. Uh, there's other interesting grinds. There's the oblique nibs, which are cut at an angle. There's architect nibs, which are the exact opposite of, of, a, of an italic nib. They're thin line going vertically, thick line going horizontally. And, of course, there is the whole world of flex. So should we go with vintage flex? Should we go with wet noodle flex? Should we go with modern flex? Should we go with Nathan Tardif reintroducing flex to the fountain pen world and making people hungry for it in modern pens? Um, there's different nib materials. Just in my little tiny collection, I have titanium, palladium, gold, and steel. Uh, compare a Japanese fine to a Western fine. So a single size can contain multitudes. Uh, even compare different Western nibs of the same size to each other. They all have different personalities. A Pelican nib is different from a Montbon nib, is different from a Lamy nib, and they're all pretty high-end manufacturers. And the feel of that nib on the paper is a different world from the feel of a ballpoint or rollerball on the same paper. You don't press down. You just gently pass your pen across the surface of the paper, and the paper needs takes what it needs from your pen in order to form your words. And yes, some papers are a little bit greedy. It wasn't until fountain pens that I understood writing as a way to get my thoughts onto paper. It's a pleasure to form letters and pass a good pen over paper. Now, I always, some of you won't like this, I always hated handwriting class when I was in elementary school. I hated tra tracing letters. I hated repeating their shapes over and over. I hated the constant criticism. Uh, one teacher used to draw red arrows to every place that I wasn't perfect. She also required quote marks, apostrophes, and commas to look like typing, where you've got the heavy dark dot and the tail. Hopefully I did that in the right direction for you. Uh, my handwriting now is my own. Uh, some of my elementary teachers wanted reading, leading tails on the letters. Others did not want leading tails. They all had their own rules. So apparently back in the 80s, the handwriting curriculum was not standardized at my elementary school. I spent a short period in high school printing, but I did end up turning back to cursive because it's just more comfortable for me. It was when I started using flex nibs I started paying attention to my handwriting, though. I used fountain pens the whole way through. Uh, I discovered Spencerian handwriting, and my current style is not Spencerian, but it's inspired by it. Uh, I tried to use the handwriting practice book for Spencerian, and I discovered, yeah, I still don't like handwriting class. <laughs> um, it turned out that was my big obstacle in learning a certain foreign language as well. Um, I've always been a heavy writer. I handwrite a lot. I'm, you know, I'm no Luddite. I do love technology. Uh, but I'm a firm believer in using the right tool for the job. And handwriting is the right tool for many jobs. Now, I do use... A remarkable tablet, which is a, an e-ink tablet, quite a lot. Uh, it, it's many notebooks in one, and it's my planner, and it's my calendar, and it works well for me as a hybrid of technology and handwriting. Uh, and especially at work, where I don't have technology committee, school leadership committee, science Olympiad notes, uh, daily planner, all that stuff, all in different notebooks. It's all in one spot, which is handy for me. And that brings me full circle to my true measuring stick for a writing instrument. It needs to disappear in my hand. To the point that I'm only thinking about my words, not my writing tool. I don't want to be thinking, my word, this Pelican M1000 is just so fine. Look at the nib flex. Look at those letters just have their little flexy doodles. I don't want, uh, when I'm truly writing, like I was writing this, I just want to write. And I found some of my pens do disappear. You saw one tonight, the Pelican M1000. No, sorry, did I just say that out loud? 
You saw one tonight, the uh, Lamy 2000. I Yeah, the Pelican M1000 does not disappear. Um, the Pilot Custom 823 also disappears in my hand. I have several vintage pans that are great at that. I've got a few that flex very well that disappear. Uh, I will say that I have two Aurora 88s, modern ones. One of them disappears, even though it's a bright orange garish color. The other one does not disappear. Uh, so, uh, actually, some of the pages here were written with a very unassuming little senator pen. Vintage 1960s senator pen. Uh, and aside from fountain pens, the only other writing instrument that really can disappear in my hand is the humble number two wooden pencil. And all that they ask is the occasional sharpening. And uh, when you've taken everything from them that you can... They're mostly biodegradable. So I use my fountain pens for everything. I love them, and I don't worry about paper for a lot of my daily writing. You know, the right tool for the job. I'm not going to use a fancy vintage flex pen on really awful paper because it's just not going to be pretty. We'll have goopy ink everywhere. Uh, so writing really should be about getting your ideas down on paper, and fountain pens help me do that. They are the right tool for the job. Now, other people like to copy out works of literature with their fountain pen, and that's their way of enjoying the pen. It's not my way, but the thing is they're enjoying the pen. They're enjoying the written word, however they enjoy it. Uh, slowing down to actually copy out a written work does force you to pay attention to individual words in it and details that you might not notice when you're just reading through. So here I am. I've actually had this YouTube channel for over 15 years, and I've been doing fountain pens for over eight of those years. And I'm not done. Uh, I, long, a while ago, I did a video retrospective where I found an old video of mine where I said, yeah, this channel's going to be done soon because I'm going to be out of ideas and pens. Well, clearly not. Uh, my, as my interest evolves, so does this channel. And yes, there are other things on this channel because if pens ever do and you know i just lose interest in pens for whatever reason i doubt i will lose interest in writing because i've been doing that since i first learned to write uh, but if i lose interest in doing pen videos i have other things to sustain the channel the book reviews the driving videos and tours of north dakota and various other types of things but for now pens will remain at its core and you know i might maybe i'm idealistic Probably am. But, but I firmly believe... I'm also pretty high on coffee right now. Uh, and I don't want to set it down because the microphone's right there. But I firmly believe that readers and lovers of the written word tend to be more open-minded and curious. They may have different ideas, but they're not afraid to entertain a new idea or a new knowledge. And I like to think that I'm like that. Uh, so I want to thank you for following me on this fountain pen journey, uh, including journeys down North Dakota's roads, and just know that more is coming. So I want to thank you for watching, and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And know that this channel has a lot more than fountain pens. New ideas, new research, uh, tours of the old find it all here so I guess I would just close by asking if you know, if you are looking for something to comment what do fountain pens mean to you in your life so let us know down in the comments so I want to thank you for watching we'll talk to you later bye bye